In this series, we're going to be talking about how to use Vagrant to set up a consistent developer environment. In this lesson, we're going to look at an introduction of virtualization, the software used in this series, and the minimum hardware requirements for virtualization, so that you don't get started down a learning path you can't actually implement on your own computer. You've probably heard of virtualization before, and you probably have a pretty good understanding of what it means, but I'm going to start from the very beginning just to make sure you've got all the vocabulary in place as we move forward. Sometimes I use multiple terms to mean the same thing, so I want to make sure that we're at least starting with some of the same concepts and terms in place. Virtualization allows multiple operating systems to simultaneously share processor resources in a safe and efficient manner. The term was originally created for mainframe computers that were going to share different resources or different applications on the same computer. Obviously, we've grown hugely since then in our computing capacity, and we can now put multiple computers onto the same machine. Now, you may be asking yourself, why would I even want to bother putting another machine on top of my machine? I'll be honest, it probably will slow you down a tiny little bit in page refresh and just general system resources. So why would you even want to do this? Well, the first one, and this is the reason that I got into it, is a desire to use Linux on a non-Linux host machine, such as a Mac or OS X or Windows. I've been using Linux as my primary operating system for almost a decade but the industry standards have moved to OS X, and it's just become increasingly difficult for me to share work with my coworkers when on a different platform. So uh, virtualization gives me the best of both worlds. It's easier for me to interact with my coworkers from my Mac base or host machine, but I can also have the familiarity of working with Linux. And for those of you who are used to working on a Linux server, you may be really anxious to get back inside that operating system you know and love. The second reason is a desire to improve consistency between developer environments and deployed servers. If you're getting sick and tired of a developer saying, well, it worked on my machine, then you may want to pay special attention to this learning series because we're going to look at some of the ways that we can standardize that developer environment so that if it works for one, it should work for all because you're using the same provisioning scripts to set up those machines. What are some of the reasons you may not want to use this though? First and foremost, hardware requirements. You need to be using at least four gigs of RAM. More is better. I've got eight gigs on my laptop and I'd say that even that would be the bare minimum for a positive experience of running a virtual machine. You're also going to need a fair amount of hard drive space, not for the Vagrant and VirtualBox software, but the fact that you're putting in a whole extra operating system on top of your existing operating system. I probably run about five gigs for each of the virtual machines that I have on my host machine. So if I have two Vagrant instances, as I'll be referring to later on, I would want to have five to 10 gigs for each of those. Now you can destroy those machines so you can recover space in between different uses of different Vagrant instances, but then you're going to be looking at a bit more time to set up the machine if you've destroyed the box previously. So if you don't have the minimum hardware requirements, I encourage you to watch through to the end of this lesson, which talks about some of the terms and software that are used for virtualization, but you may not want to proceed with the actual hands-on components in later lessons. You may also not want to proceed with Vagrant if standardization is not important to you, or in more specific terms, if you love your current developer platform, don't bother with Vagrant. This really is something that you can add to your toolkit if you're having a problem getting software working on your local environment, but you know that it works on the server. Maybe you want to manage multiple versions of PHP and you don't like the way MAMP does it or you don't like the way Windows does it. Maybe you're just on a Windows machine and you've decided that you really are not finding that the tools are very helpful on Windows. For example, Drush, or you don't feel like getting Sigwin working or any number of different reasons. So hopefully I've 
explained some of my enthusiasm behind using Vagrant. Again, it's not for everyone. And if it's not for you, I'm okay with that. But just to be aware, there are lots of different ways to set up a developer environment. And this is one that I've gotten a lot of use out of. Let's take a look now at each of the different pieces we'll be working with throughout this learning series. The first one is Vagrant. Vagrant is a tool for building complete development environments. It supports a range of virtualization providers and provisioning frameworks for configuration management. You can read more about it at vagrantup.com. If you do go to the site, you'll see that it is an open source product and it's been around since 2010. The original developer, Mitchell Hachimoto, is now working on Vagrant as his primary job, which is really great. I love to see when open source products are able to support someone like this. The next piece that we'll be taking a look at is VirtualBox. VirtualBox is a provider for virtualization. It allows an unmodified operating system with all of its installed software to run in a special guest environment on top of your existing host operating system. Note those three bold words, provider, guest, and host. You'll be hearing those again throughout the learning series. If you want to know more about VirtualBox, you can go to virtualbox.org. Next is the actual operating system that we install as a base box. We'll be using Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an open source operating system. It's a derivative of Debian and based on the Linux kernel. We'll be using Ubuntu as our base box when we create our virtual machine. Finally, Chef. Chef is a provisioning framework used to deploy software in a consistent manner to a single or many machines. It ensures each machine is working in an identical environment or has identical software installed. When I refer to a single or many machines, I'm referring to the different ways that Chef can be used. We're going to be using Chef Solo. Chef can also be used in a network environment where you're using it to provision many, many nodes. Perhaps one is a database server, perhaps you've got some which are responsible for load balancing, some which are responsible for the actual installation of Drupal. We're not going to be doing anything that complicated. We're just going to have Chef provision a solo or single machine on our local environment using the provisioning scripts which are available from the host machine. Let's review all of those terms. Vagrant is installed on a host machine to create a guest virtual machine from a base box such as Ubuntu. Vagrant acts as a wrapper around a provider such as VirtualBox. Vagrant supports provisioning of guest machines with configuration management software such as Chef. To summarize quickly what we've talked about in this lesson, we've done an introduction to virtualization, we've talked about the software we'll be using in this series, and I've also talked about the minimum hardware requirements for virtualization. Mm -hmm.